Bless your name, Jesus. Provider. El Shaddai. God of abundance, you bless us tonight. You pour out your blessings on us tonight. Rameshiano Sone. We trust on you. Our eyes are on you. Not our money. We don't withhold. We let go of our money. You know, I like especially to give, I love to give when Pastor Pat takes an offering because she has the anointing for receiving the offering. I noticed that many have that anointing in this ministry, but she has a special anointing. Each time she takes the offering, you make sure you give a lot. I, I mean, I'm not in my church. I'm not in my ministry. It's not for my pocket. I'm speaking by the Spirit. It will not change my salary. So give, please, tonight. Come on, there's three or four more people that have to step out in faith. It's nice to sing a nice song. Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Come on, take a step of faith tonight. I want two, three people to give a thousand dollars. I break the spirit of poverty and lack in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of fear of giving in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want some people to give a thousand. Many to give a hundred. Fifty. More of you can give fifty. And you know what? It will make a difference in the, in the months to come in your, in your income. Believe me tonight. Believe me. Come on, some of you can give a hundred, some of you can give fifty, some of you can give a thousand. Like I say, it's not for me. It's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Let's all join hands in the advancement of the kingdom. Let's all do our part. Lord, I release the money tonight. I release generosity tonight in the name of Jesus. Stinginess, I bind you. Go from this place. We don't want you here. What we're going to do is uh, uh, during the message, we're going to leave uh, the two buckets. Once, once they're empty. You... And then if there's a verse, a sentence, a principle, a revelation that touches you, listen to me. We do that in our church every Sunday. We have a bucket there and people come during the service in any moment after the, the tithe and offering if there's something that touches you tonight you want that principle that principle to be active in your life and to be confirmed in your life come and give something significant have you ever sown that way it's another way of sowing and it's a powerful way so we have taken the habit of doing that and it's powerful i have many testimonies of people i say something let's say I, let's say that i, I say uh, walk in faith and you need to walk in faith because you've been attacked by doubt so you rise up you you put your hand in your pocket and you come and give something in what i've just preached okay can we do that tonight Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a blessing, a special multiplication blessing on every person, every family represented by every envelope here. I command multiplication to come, money come, money, I command you to multiply in the name of Jesus. If there's a $20 bill in an envelope, I command to be 40, 60, 80. Money multiply right now in the name of Jesus. We need you money. 
work for us not against us in Jesus name amen Tonight is the night. I always say that. Today is the day. When I wake up in the morning, I bless my day. Today is the day. You, you have to bless your day so it works for you. I'm going to tell you something. It's not in the message. It's, a, it's just a nugget, okay? It's an appetizer before the meal. You have to bless your trial. Don't curse your trial. Many of you, even without knowing it, you curse your trial. By the way you speak about your trial. Hmm. And because you curse your trial, instead of blessing your trial, well, it takes longer to get out of it. And it's, instead of, of giving good fruits... It gives bad fruits because everything should work out for good Amen. for those who love God. You know that verse, you know that principle, but it's not always working that way for you. Why? Because when it's going um, badly, you curse your season or you curse your, your test, you curse your trial. And I've learned to bless everything. To bless even the things that I don't like and I find difficult. <sighs> okay, I'll try something else then. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I bless the message that I will preach. I call for the spirit of revelation in this place. The spirit of um, spiritual understanding. In the name of Jesus, come. Come. Everybody lift up your hands. And call the spirit of knowledge. Call the spirit of revelation right now on you. On you. Come on me, spirit of revelation. Come on me, spirit of knowledge. Come on me. Open up my eyes. Speak to me personally. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to speak tonight about transformation of emotions. We oftentimes speak about healing of the emotions, but it's uh, a little different. It's another revelation. It's another point of view. And you know, we're not, we're not true with revelation. I think it's going to be for eternity because God has no limit and he is a big God and his word is deep and rich and we have to expand our knowledge. And so I'm going to speak on the transformation of emotions because that's the team transformation glory. And last night I preached on a very, very deep 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 subject tonight is lighter so you can relax and receive <laughs> but even if it was deep it was needed amen have you been to the mountain today <laughs> yes amen the lord showed me that um, one of the reason people have so much problem with um, emotions it's because of religious spirits. We think that because we're Christian, we don't have emotions. We're human and we have emotions and we will always have emotions. But we cannot lead our life based on our emotions, good or bad. Good or bad. I feel good about it, so I'm going to do it. I feel good about buying that house. I feel good about going there. You don't take a decision based on a bad feeling or a good feeling. You, ba you, you base a decision 
on the leading of the Holy Spirit. So usually I wait a while and I practice myself with shopping. <laughs> My husband would say amen if he'd be here tonight. So I wait a day or two. I like the thing. But I, I, I'm not going to buy it unless I'm led by the Spirit to buy it. Oh, I don't like the thing. Well, maybe you need to buy it anyway. But wait a day or two. Same thing with um, when you choose a mate. <laughs> Small decision. <laughs> wait that those overwhelming feelings calm down. And see if it's still the, the good man for you. Or the good woman for you. Don't be led by feelings. But feelings are there. We cannot suppress them. We cannot negate them. And uh, I think we've done a lot of that in, a Christian, in Christian circles. We've suppressed them. We've negated them. And we've tried to take them away. But God is good. And tonight he'll show you what to do with negative feelings. And I'm not going to pass through all the negative feelings that exist because we would be here until tomorrow. But I'm going to give you a few examples so you know what I mean. In the, the, in the realm of the feelings, I think as Christians and religious mentality, we've been naive. Naivete, I don't know if you can say that in English, I pray that you have the gift of interpretation, by the way, just in case you need it. <laughs> it's the same word, good for me. Naivete. <laughs> We've been a little naive. You know, instead of being prophetic. Being prophetic is the opposite of being naive. You know, you, you, you want a child so much, a nice, cute baby. So cute. Until they get to 18 or 16 or 14, depending. Depending. <laughs> depending. But we've been naive. We thought that our kids will not do those things. But your kid has a calling on his life. And you know what? His calling will be challenged by the enemy. But because of those feelings of, you know, a cute baby, or you want to be in love and get married, as though Satan loves marriages, he hates marriages. So we're naive because we're led by feelings. I'm not saying you shouldn't get married, but I'm saying don't stay naive. Don't be naive. Be a warrior. And learn how to pray prayers of war. Because your child will be attacked. Your marriage will be attacked. I'm not saying bad things against you. I'm saying the truth. Yeah. So it's one of many feelings that we have to be aware. We have that feeling of naivety. And don't look at me like I'm a, such a spaced out person. Is there any parents in this place? You know exactly what I mean. Grandparents in this place, you know exactly. Married people in this place, you know exactly what I mean. And so we have to get rid of those cute, nice feelings and be prophetic. A prophetic person sees before time. And she's a pre uh, prévoyant. Preventative. Thank you so much. Why don't you sit here and help me? <laughs> I'm serious. If you want to. And emotions, they fluctuate. Especially in women. I've heard you, man. I've heard you. You can say man, but not too loud. I saw somebody did, did that. <laughs> 
But men should be wise and know that. And not be so much troubled by the wife's emotions. I'm, I'm not saying to despise emotions, because many men despise women's emotion. Oh, you don't say amen now. <laughs> and us women, we should take a journal and write down some dates. Write down when our emotions are like that. So we count the days. And when the days arrive, I say, well, I will not trust in that mood. I will not be mad at my husband on that mood. Why? Because it's just an emotion. Amen? Are you with me tonight? So the Lord wants to take those emotions and transfer, transform them for his glory. Is it good news? Okay, help me. So far, so good. Because, you know, we thought of emotions as something... <sighs> so, oftentimes we despised emotions. Is it true? Emotions, some of those emotions are just powerful. When they are transformed by the Holy Spirit, they become power in the hands of God. Take joy, for example. Joy is strength. So it's not just joy. No, it's strength and power. It's not just joy. Do you see what I mean? It's like peace. Peace is a weapon. When you put on your shoes of peace and you tread upon the head of the enemy, the God of peace will soon crush Satan's head. It's not just peace. You know, have you ever been in the hippies? I was in that movement when I was young. So you can figure out how old I am. And it was peace and love, you know. But peace, peace in the kingdom is a power. It's a weapon against Satan. Satan hates peace. Because when you have your peace, you can pray effectively. And you can discern effectively. And you can take good decisions. Amen? It's like love. Love is in the air. You know, love. Love is a commandment. Love is an order. Love is the new covenant in Jesus Christ. It's not just love. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you take your emotions, even the bad ones, even the, the, ne the most negative ones, and you put them in the hands of God, it transforms them and it becomes power. Because nothing is lost in the kingdom. That's what she said to me yesterday. <laughs> Madame here. Madam Pastor. I love this woman, by the way. She's a powerful woman. She's dangerous. You better be friend with her. It's best for you. Hallelujah. But she da she's dangerous against the enemy, not against people. Let me straight that out. So I'm going to give you five or six examples of negative emotions that can be transformed in the glory of God for the advancement of the kingdom that can be a powerful tool in God's hands. Amen? Amen. So let's go. Let's start. Are you ready? Yes. 
Go with me with, uh, to uh, Philippians. Philippiens. 4. Everybody know probably the passage I'm getting to. And uh, I'm going to talk about anxiety. I know nobody has that here, but I do once in a while, so please let me indulge in my own thing. I know it's not your problem, but please be patient with me. Verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when you are anxious, did it ever happen to you once, a, maybe once a year or something? <laughs> when you are anxious, if you don't put that anxiety to work for you, it's going to work against you. And it can destroy you. And I see too many Christians taking pills against anxiety, and I'm not despising that at all, and I'm not putting you down if you do that. Please follow me. But because we don't take God's medicine, we take man's medicine, which is better than nothing. It's better to take man's medicine than to die and go before your time. But we have a powerful medicine. We have to become lovers of the word of God and put into practice what the Lord says. He says, be anxious for nothing. Is it possible to be anxious for nothing? Hmm. If you do what that verse says, it's possible. If you don't, you know what? It's not possible. Right. There are some situations, if you don't apply the word of God on your situation, well, you know, it's impossible to be at peace. But take that negative emotion to be anxious. I don't like to be anxious, do you? Oh, I don't like the feeling. I don't like the sensation, the sentiment, you know? When you're, you're troubled, you're anxious, you, uh, it, it hurts right here, eh? Have you noticed? There's like a physical place where anxiety likes to uh, stay. And it's, it's, it's here. But each time you're going to be anxious, remember me? You know my name, Colette. Remember my, my preaching tonight, okay? And each time you are going to be anxious, it means ding, 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 the bell rings for prayer. Ding, 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 each time it, it hurts here, each time you're anxious, each time you worry, it's a bell ringing to go to prayer. Supplication followed by thanksgiving. Only supplication will not do the job. Supplication followed by thanksgiving will do the job. And then peace will come back to you. And peace is a weapon. And peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So let's say you do that. Peace comes back. You pray until you have peace. You, you, you feel that you have done the job. And uh, you know... Things are okay. Half an hour later, an hour later, the same burden comes back. The enemy will want you to believe that it didn't work. You know, I prayed for the rain to stop this afternoon, and it didn't. And I was frustrated, and I prayed again. And it didn't. Well, I put my sunglasses on. <laughs> by faith. And the sun came out. But it took three times. So you have to pray two, three times, four times before peace come back. But don't let the enemy take your anxiety because he will transform it. That's right. An emotion 
will be transformed no matter what. Uh, uh, let's say a frustration never stays a frustration if you don't deal with it. It will become sooner or later a, an obsession. You're frustrated because your husband leaves his clothes on the floor. He, not, he has a, a very large drawer, you know. <laughs> And that frustration, if you don't take care of it, will become an obsession. And that obsession can kill your marriage. Because an obsession leads to another obsession. Because you know what? An emotion will never stay the same. It will be transformed. So let God transform your negative emotions because otherwise the enemy will take them and transform them thank you very much so peace is a power to crush the enemy's head and when anxiety is there don't let it rule you but don't negate it oh no 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 oh no uh, it doesn't bother me you spiritual pride person. Don't say that. It doesn't bother you. Of course it does. It bothers me. But I don't let it bother me too long. Take that. Put it into the hands of God. Say, Lord, I put my anxiety, right, not my, the anxiety into your hands right now. I know it's a call to go to prayer. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And your anxiety is transformed into prayer, into supplication, into thanksgiving, and then into, into peace. And peace becomes a guard to your mind and to your emotions. Amen? Let's take guilt. Anybody has guilt? Any parents in this place? You're a parent, you have guilt, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. So guilt, if it's not dealt with, and if it's not put in the Holy Spirit's hands, will soon become a terrible negative force in the hand of the enemy. And... Um, you will become sooner or later someone who is so codependent of everybody around that it will uh, poison, poison your life. It will poison your life. Guilt has to be taken early. As soon as you feel guilt, transform it and to conviction. Because you know what? Guilt and conviction, it's almost the same feeling. When you are under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it's like if you're guilt, you feel the guilt. You're, but it's not the guilt. The Holy Spirit is working for you, not against you. And He wants you to see a flaw or a lack in your life, or a sin, or a, a weakness, because he wants you to be strong and happy. But the enemy wants to accuse you. She understood, eh? She understood the principle. So, come on. So in what I say, okay? So guilt has to be dealt quickly. So let's say one, uh, a member of your family is doing something wrong, and all of a sudden you feel guilt because you think, oh, if I should have said that, if I should, I should not have said that, I should have done that, and this and that. That's an example for guilt. So you stop right there and you change, you transform your guilt into conviction. And if maybe you, there's something you did wrong, ask your forgiveness. I ask the Lord's forgiveness. Or ask the Lord's forgiveness for the other person. One day, he'll ask himself. But in the meantime, ask for him. That's intercession. 
So you say, Lord, I ask forgiveness for my son, my daughter, the, per the person I, and she didn't do that. She, she should have. I'm asking forgiveness. As a parent, maybe I didn't do this or that. I ask your forgiveness and I forgive myself. Guilt goes away. Guilt goes away. Embrace conviction. Say with me tonight, I embrace conviction. Conviction is a good thing. Conviction will keep your heart pure. Conviction will keep your motives pure. Are you with me? I used to not welcome so much conviction because it feels so much like guilt. The line is very fine between conviction and, and guilt. But you will learn to discern between the two. All right? Number three. There was that preacher last night who said about those preaching one, two, three, four, five. Talking about me. Let's take anger. You look so sweet tonight. I know none of you have that. You look so cute. You don't have anger, don't you? No, you don't. You're Christian, after all. Hey? You're a Christian. You don't get angry. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 4, 26. A Christian should not be angry. 26 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Which means that we are going to be angry sometimes. And you know what? I hope you get angry once in a while. If you're never angry, it's not a good sign. It's a sign of depression. It's a sign of deep, deep, deep sadness. It's a sign that you're not there anymore. You're gone in another world. But your anger should be redeemed by the Lord. Should be transformed in a spiritual force against the enemy. Because the violent take the kingdom by force. And we need some anger. And we need some violence. But well managed and directed to the good place. I should have many people so just in what I just said. You know, some of you are angry, and instead of doing something with anger, you, you, you suppress it, and then you become sick. A lot of sicknesses, it's because of suppressed anger. A lot of depressions, it's because of suppressed anger. If you have to go in your car and have a good yell, well, do it. Ah! I hate that. Maybe you cannot say in the face of the person, but just let it out somehow in, the, in a manner that you can afford to do. You cannot beat up your wife if you're angry. You cannot beat up your kids. Mm, I, I won't go there. <laughs> and you cannot say bad names to someone because you're angry. But direct your anger in a force for the advancement of the kingdom. In a spiritual violence, spiritual 
violence against the enemy. I find out that people are too nice with the devil. And they're angry at people all the time. I see too many angry Christians. And they're so cute with Satan. I hate it. I'm angry at that. Do you understand what I say? I'm saying the truth here. The truth of the word of God. We're cute with the enemy and we're too mad with one another. We have to be merciful with one another. You know, you, you, you yell at each small thing in the house. And you're angry at everything and everybody. And the enemy, yes, it's so easy with you. Talk to me. Is it true? Come on, rise up, mighty warriors of the Lord. Don't be mad at your husband. Don't be mad at your sister, your brother. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Take that anger and let the Holy Spirit transform it in a spiritual violence against the enemy. Jesus, my Lord, my Lord, there's some prayers that need to be aggressive, aggressive prayer. If we want the atmosphere to change, if we want things to really change, oh Lord, I, I'm not mocking, I just want you to to provoke you into the good things of God. Oh, Jesus. Bless so and so and bless. It's better than nothing, but you know. <laughs> if you're going through some hard stuff, it will not do the job. You have to get mad. The enemy has stolen your mind. Take your mind back in Jesus' name. He has stolen your marriage. Take your marriage back in the name of Jesus. He has stolen your kids. Oh, I give them to the Lord. Me? I give them to the Lord. I take them back from Satan every day of my life. When I rise up in the morning, he trembles. He says, not her again. <laughs> and I will pursue my enemies. And I will not come back until everything that is, he has stolen from me, I, I've taken it back. I'm determined. But you know, I have to be angry at the devil. And lovely with my husband. Yes, dear. I will do that for you. I love you. What a smile. But the enemy, I hate him. So your anger and your hate has to be in the hands of the Holy Spirit and be well um, directed. Are you with me? Let's continue. I chose a few emotions because there's so many. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7. We're going to talk about sorrow. Sorrow. Sadness. Sorrow. When the enemy makes me cry... He pays for it. He pays for it. And I say it, you're going to pay for this. You're going to pay for this. So he has to remember next time. It's like a child when you correct a child. He has to remember next time. Oh yes, if I do this, my parents will do this to me. So the enemy has to remember you. But you're too nice. Say to your, to your neighbor, you're too cute with the devil. It has to change. 
Say that to someone right now. You're too cute with the devil. It has to be changed. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 7 says it well. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So there's, there's a transformation. Don't think for a moment that sorrow will stay sorrow. Sorrow will be transformed. And if you're not aware of it and if you don't take care of it soon enough, sorrow will soon become death. You can die from it. And I'm convinced that some godly people, nice people, good people died before their time. Because sorrow took them in the grave. Sorrow leads to death. I'm not inventing that. I'm not, I'm not saying that to do a good message. The word of God says it. You read it with me. But sorrow in the hands of God can produce repentance. And repentance can lead to deliverance. The word salvation in that verse means complete deliverance in every area of your life so there's a sorrow when the sorrow when 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 sadness comes on you take a moment let, listen to me take a moment to examine if it's a godly sorrow or, or a worldly sorrow if it's a godly sorrow it means that the holy spirit listen to this Trusts you enough to put on you a sorrow, a sadness that comes from God. He wants you to intercede for someone. Because now you have given your life to God. So it's not your life. If it's not your life, it's not your suffering. It's someone else's suffering. Because we're supposed to bear one another's burden. That's the law of Christ. That's the new covenant. That's the new law. That's the only law. The law of love. The law of bearing one another's burden. So when you are sad, wait for a minute. Examine before the Lord. Is it a good sorrow? Is it a, a godly sorrow or a worldly sorrow? Because you know, in our human nature, we're so quick to wanting to get rid of the sorrow. If you're sad, you're going to eat something? You're going to drink something, maybe? You're going to smoke something? You're going to anesthetize an anesthesi? it somehow? Anesthetize? Whatever. You know what I mean. You want to block it. You don't like the sensation. You're so used to block any negative emotion. You don't let the time to God to do something valuable with it. Oh my Jesus, this is good. So the next time you're, you, you, you feel sadness, you remember me, okay? Not for me, but for the message. And you, you stop. You don't try to right away call somebody. You don't try right away to get rid of it. Take a minute, a quality minute, and ask the Lord, is it a godly sorrow or, or a worldly sorrow? And if it's a, if it's a worldly sorrow, well, get rid of it. Get rid of it, because if you don't get rid of it, it will lead you to death, eventually. Pray about it. And if it's a godly sorrow, ask the Lord where it comes from. Is it maybe you're taking the sorrow of someone else? Is there any pastor in this place? Is there any leaders in this place? Is there, is there any counselor in this place? Is there any parents, grandparents, husbands, wives? You know, we are connected to someone. You're not alone. 
in your bubble. We are all connected to a group, to a community, to a family. And you know what? Because we are connected, the sadness, the problem, the affliction of someone could come on us by the Holy Spirit because if we don't intercede for one another, some people won't make it. Let's say someone has um, a tremendous uh, affliction. It's unbearable. God can take that pain and distribute it among 10 people. So those 10 people, it's bearable. So the person for whom it's not bearable, she can go through it. So you feel sad, you receive a godly sorrow, you receive a burden of intercession, but because you feel sad, poor me, I feel sad. Let's get rid of that. So do you know how many times we fail to intercede because we thought that sorrow is always bad? But it's going to change. It's changing. Number five, fifth emotion that has to be transformed into a force, a spiritual force in the hands of God. What do you think it is? Something that we have regularly. Fear. Fear. Fear is a powerful, powerful, powerful force. That's why it's the best chosen tool of the enemy. That's what is, he tries on us all the time. Actually, I could tell you, if you have a problem, who has a problem right now? <laughs> Just three people. I'm going home. I don't preach to the right crowd tonight. <laughs> who has a problem or two? Lift up your hands. Stop and think for a moment. Let's say that in your problem... There's no fear. You have the same problem, but no fear. It's not the same problem. The perspective changes. It, it, it changes everything. So my point is, now each time you have a problem, the first thing you have to get rid of in your situation is what? I'm going to tell you why. It's Satan's favorite weapon against us, against us Christian. Because we've been wired by God to live by faith. Faith is believing that something good will happen. And fear is believing that something bad will happen. So fear is a kind of faith. It attracts. It's a force of attraction. When you fear something, you attract it on you. Oh, my God. Do you realize you've been, uh, come on, dit flatté. She understands you should sow in that, in that principle. You should, too. I should have at least 20 people who come and sow something. Well, uh, what, how do you say flatté? Do you realize that we've been flattering our fears? We've been flattering our fears. 
And all that time, it's the first thing we have to get rid of when we have a problem. Because fear attracts. Why? Because we're Christian. If it's a non-Christian, fear is not as bad. Have you, have, have, have you, have you followed me? Your aunt, uh, Diane, is not a Christian. Listen to me. If she has fear, it's not as bad as for you because you're a Christian. Why? Because the Christian is wired to live by faith. And fear is a perverted kind of faith. And the enemy knows that. He knows the principle that the just shall live by faith. By his faith. So if you fear, you attract. Who wants to attract problems? Don't we have enough like that? <laughs> Are you with me? Don't you ever tolerate fear anymore. As soon as you sense fear, transform in, a, in the power of faith. Let's say you fear. What, what, are the fear. what are the fears that you have? Fear of man. So let's say you fear that that person will believe that of you, that will interfere with you. Uh, uh, you, you fear that you will uh, displease the person. You are going to confess, I believe that that person will agree with me. I believe, instead of believing that the person will be against you, believe the opposite and confess something like that. And you will sense faith rising up in you you fear the future the fear of the future is one of uh, of the greatest fears we fear something that is not even there yet we fear something that don't like doesn't exist because future doesn't exist yet actually it exists in the hands of god he knows our future our future is in his hands but we don't believe in him that much we don't trust in him as much as we want to think so we have fear of the future. We have fear that his promises will not come to pass. So each time you have fear, stop and say, I believe that his promise will come to pass. I believe that the future is good. I believe the end is good. Say something. Each time you fear, say something. Your mouth will not want to say something like that because your mouth has been trained to say negative things. Your mouth is rebellious. See, if, you, if you're honest, say amen. amen. It has been trained by you to say unbelief thing, uh, things of un, 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 unbelief all the time, things of fear, things of uh, negativity, anxiety, defeat. But now, each time you will feel fear, think of me. Not, a, not for me, for the message. And say, I will not tolerate fear anymore. Say with me, I will not tolerate fear anymore. Say to your neighbor, don't you ever tolerate fear anymore. Fear is a destructive thing. You know, I don't like the emotion of fear. I, 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 doesn't feel good, eh? When we feel fear. Isn't it good when we don't have fear? Oh my Jesus, it's good. Is it good? When we don't feel the fear. Fear of the outcome. I, I said last night, for those who were here, I'll repeat it if you don't mind, that um, in, in front of my house, I showed the, the, the clip to uh, Pastor Maeve today. She couldn't believe her eyes. It was, was it awful? 
Are you pity for me? This is, no, you don't pity me. No, 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 no. No, no, the, the end is good. The end is good. But I, w I wanted to bring my, f my iPhone and show. But anyway, it was too much problems today for that. And, uh, but I, I, I taped with my phone what they're doing in front of my house. You know, I don't have a big mansion or anything like that. But I like my, my uh, view. I like my outside more than my inside. I like my view. I, I live near the, the, the river, St. Lawrence River. In the city, but I have that magnificent view. People come from all over just to see my, my view. They don't realize it's my view. <laughs> they come, they come, they park on my street, they come on my, my, my ground across the street. They don't ask my permission or anything like that. It's my place, my territory. <laughs> <laughs> but since I'm a good person, I let them come, you know. But um, they decided to redo the, the street and the, and the, the, how do you say that, the sewers and the les gros tuyaux, comment on dit ça, les gros tuyaux. Big pipes and repair the pipes and the drains. And the first day was bad. The second day, it was awful. The third day, I thought it was the, I, I thought it was in Haiti when they had the, the big uh, tremblement de terre, earthquake. It was awful, awful, awful. And they, 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 creusé, digged very, very, very deep, very deep. I couldn't believe my eyes and my ears. Beep, beep, beep. All day. From 7 in the morning to 5 at night. All the time. That noise. Beep, beep, beep. And those big, big trucks and everything, you know. I, I, I caught my husband liking it. I was frustrated at him. He was outside and, you know, like a little boy liking tongue cut rocks and things like that. With a big smile looking at that. When I came out and he saw me, he stopped smiling. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> I said, you like that? Oh! Incredible, eh? Men are like that. They like trucks, <laughs> toys. <laughs> but I was, I was not so depressed and not so anxious. You know why? The guy told me, he, he knocked at my door one day because he, he, would, he wanted to tell me that he was going to cut the water for an hour or two. So he, he, he knocked and he said, I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. I said, it's already done. <laughs> You've disturbed me for a few days now. But he sa I said, how long are you going to be on my, my street like that? Because even my, my little garden, it's, it's finished. My flowers, my fence, my um, mon gazebo, uh, my, everything is finished, you know. Everything has is, is been taken away. So I said, how long are you going to be here? He said... Two months and a half. I said, what? You, you mean all summer and a part of, 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 of fall? I like to sit on my porch and look at the river and, and you know, that's my therapy. I need therapy. <laughs> and that's my therapy every day. And I haven't had it for the last month. Do you feel it? <laughs> he said two months, two months and a half. But he said, don't worry, we'll, um, we'll put everything back like before. And even better than before because they, they, they smashed my fence. You know, my fence is no good. He said, we'll put a new fence. 
and we'll put new um, that turb sod and your flower everything will be the same and better you know what I believed him I believed him and so I don't like it but I know that it will end and I know that what he said he will do and he's just an ordinary man how come I'm not sure about God's promises how come I doubt God and I'm not sure how it will be finished and I'm not sure that he will put the fence back like it was even better how come I'm not sure we'll put the sod the grass I prefer grass like before how come I'm not sure because fear fear is there I fear the outcome I fear the future I fear that what I'm going through will destroy me or will destroy my loved ones or will destroy my destiny and I'm not trusting God as much as I would like for you to believe so the Lord is teaching me lessons with my nice street the Lord is saying I'm digging I'm digging in you I want you to go deeper and the Lord tonight is digging in you and he wants to uproot fear and he wants to uproot anxiety and he wants to uproot sadness some of you have been sad so sad for too long you have to come out of that tonight tonight is the night you have to come out of depression tonight. You know, the line is very fine between pr the pressure of life and the depression. If you let pressure get on you too much, you will go into depression. So each time we have pressure, take that pressure, give it to God. Say, God, I give you the pressure I'm going through. Transform it in a spiritual force. Transform, him, transform it in a force that will help me to press on. If you continue to press on in prayer, to press on in fasting, to press on in forgiving, you will avoid depression. But if you let pressure get on you, you will go into depression. Your negative emotions will be transformed whether you want it or not so you better be in charge say I'm in charge I'm in charge of my emotions I will not let my emotions dictate my life because from tonight I'm in charge I'm in charge of my emotions and I give my emotions to the Holy Spirit I will not let anxiety rule me but I rule over anxiety and I transform anxiety into prayer of supplication with thanksgiving and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard my mind and Jesus Christ the peace of God guard my heart my emotions my personality in Christ Jesus peace is my weapon I tread upon serpents with my shoes of peace the God of peace will soon crush Satan's head under his feet Lord I will not sleep on my anger anymore but I'm going to take that anger 
and wrestle against principalities. I will not wrestle anymore against flesh and blood. But I'm going to take that anger that I have against so and so. You know the so and so. And I transform it now by the power of the Holy Spirit into a spiritual weapon. And I'm not going to go into a dispute anymore because of that principle. Lord, I realize tonight that when sorrow comes, I want to get rid of it as quickly as I can. But from now on, I will take a pause and ask you, am I carrying the burden of someone to accomplish the law of love? So Holy Spirit, from tonight, transform worldly sorrow into godly sorrow. Lord, I know that I'm wired as a Christian to believe, to live by faith. I realize tonight that fear comes on me often. Each time now that I will feel fear, I will transform it into, into faith. I will not tolerate fear anymore. Because I know now that fear attracts problems. From now on, I stop when I have fear. And I change it in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koraso de rebeshe. Kiata rabashata. Kotorokoso. Pray with me. Pray in the spirit. Karamashande. Oraso de rebeshe. If you want the anointing of the message tonight, come, come, come. Come forth. Ramayantosu. I need a sip of water. Kerebeshe de aso. Thank you. Come on, pray. Keep the anointing high. Oriako sorebeshente. Oremese. Sir, I think you have given me a prophecy some years ago. Yeah. You know, recently, your prophecy helped me so much because you know the opposite happened the prophecy has been attacked but I know that the prophecy was of the Lord there's no way you could have known that son and the details you've given me yeah please pray for him okay when you when you think of him but you don't know how much your prophecy helps me right now thank you thank you so much I when I saw you I said is it is it the man because I told that to Pastor Maven I, was, I wasn't sure who it was but I had your face in my mind I couldn't believe that I, I couldn't forget that word and I call it on him. I call that word to be accomplished. We have to war with our prophecies. When you receive a prophecy, it's, wow, hallelujah. Don't be naive. Stop being naive. The enemy attacks everything that moves. Don't be naive and think, oh, I have a prophecy, hallelujah. War with your prophecy. 
Tell the devil, that's what, that's what the word of prophecy said, and it will come to pass. Can I give you a second? Yes. The Lord says this sun is made for the next anointing, yes. the next harvest. Why this prophecy has been delayed 10 years? It's, it's almost 10 years. It's been delayed 10 years because he's been meant for the next revival move in Quebec. You thought it was for the last move. No, the Lord says, it's not for the last move. You, you, you didn't know the tick-tock of my heart. It was, your son is made to be a musician for the next move of God that's going to hit Canada and, and, and Quebec. So that's why the timing was misunderstood, uh, because he was meant for this next move that's breaking out now, in Jesus' name. That was the missing part of it. I knew, I knew, I knew I would receive the missing part of that prophecy you know there's a delay because God's timing is perfect and actually I want to stop saying it's an attack it's a transformation God is transforming your kids stop saying they've been attacked because we're giving the devil the glory I'm going to start by myself the Lord is taking those attacks and is using them to form them, to transform them, to uproot religious spirits from them. And when your kids come back, they'll be so dedicated and so strong, but not your way, not your style, not the way you think they're going to be. Because there's a new style, there's a new sound, there's a new trumpet, there's a new generation. And there's a new anointing. And we haven't seen anything yet. And we have to trust God. I'm preaching to myself tonight. If you need it, take it, but I need it. Joanna. My dear Joanna, I hope you would be here tonight. <laughs> Your husband told you, I guess, eh? <laughs> For those who were not here last night. <laughs> There's a cloud of witnesses, yeah. You know, four years ago, your, your son is, well, five years ago then, at winter camp, she asked for prayer because she wanted to have a son. And I said, and I rarely say a date, you know, because uh, if, if, you, if you make a mistake, you look like a fool, you know. And <laughs> so I said, um, before three months, you're going to be pregnant. So then I come back in summer camp a few months after the five, five months maybe. And so I'm at, I'm at the, 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 um, the trailer, and the first person I see on the ground is Joanna. And all of a sudden, I remember the prophecy. I forgot about that, you know. And I said, oh, my God, what if, you know, fear came. And what if she's not pregnant? Well, I said, I'm going to humble myself and say, you know, um, I said before three months, but I was wrong. And uh, she said, oh, Pastor Colette, you know what? I'm pregnant. I said, oof, praise you, Jesus. I was so relieved. And last night, uh, when I arrived in the place, I didn't see her. I didn't see her husband. I, sit, I sat in the front. The Spirit of the Lord started to speak to me about you. And he, he, he said... It, tell her, when I said, the Lord, she, she's not here. Tell her that it's time for another, another child. And the Lord says, don't fear. Don't fear. Because there are a way. There's a way. God will make a way. And it's, it, it, it's not the way you think. And it's not because it's been hard one time. Uh, it, it, that it's going to be the same. It's, an, it's another child, it's another season, it's another thing. 
And when her husband came to the front, I was not surprised to see him because the Lord had talked to me before. And he said, tell them to have another child. But what I didn't know, I don't know, I don't know if I should say it publicly. Well, go ahead. Is it okay? Is it okay? She had asked the Lord, I don't want another child because it was hard for her. I, I didn't know about that. You know, when I said it's time to have another child, I didn't know you had complications. She said, Lord, if it's from you, you are going to tell me um, either by dream or prophecy or, you know, in a way that you will not have a doubt that it's God. And it's strange that it's the same, the same prophet. Eh? <laughs> and when your husband came to the front to take the offering and he said, I bind the spirit of barrenness on, on money. And he, and, he, and he told you about the prophecy. I said, it's a confirmation, Lord. You want Joanna to have another child. So I command the fear to go in the name of Jesus. I speak healing on the wombs, healing on every part of your body. In the name of Jesus, you will feel no pain. You will feel no pain. I break the curse of Eve. I break the curse of Eve. When the Lord says you will bear children with pain, I break that curse because your second Adam, the Lord, your second Adam has paid the price. In the name of Jesus, pain you go. Fear of pain you go. In the name of Jesus, be fruitful in every area of your ministry of your life as a mother as a wife as a minister in jesus name in jesus name receive that in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name Lord, I speak the anointing. I speak the anointing. I speak fresh oil, fresh oil, precious oil from heaven. Precious oil from heaven. Who is the pianist? Please, could you stop the music? Because I'm going to sing prophetically. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought an angel was playing or something. <laughs> I speak precious oil. Look up, look up, look up. The heavens are opening up right now, like you will open up a, a curtain. The heavens are opening up. Can I have the real pianist, please? Heavens are opening up. Just play just a little 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 bit receive by faith the precious oil of heaven right now come come on us come come on us precious oil Precious oil, precious oil from heaven. Receive the precious oil. Oil directly, and oil directly from the throne of grace. Come, come on me. Say it, sing it, say it, sing it. soul from heaven precious soul from heaven there are some burdens that are being removed right now you will mark my words mark my words when you leave this tent the burden will not be there anymore I receive the oil from heaven, I receive the oil that breaks yokes. 
I receive the thick, thick, thick oil, thick, thick oil that breaks burdens, that breaks yokes. Receive the oil from heaven. Receive the oil, the precious oil that breaks burdens, that breaks yokes, that breaks yokes. Some of you, when you think of the person, you get all trouble inside. You will not have that anymore. When you will think of that person, you will think victory. You will think breakthrough. You will think a release. You will think the promise of God. Precious oil from heaven, break every curse, break every curse, break every curse, break every curse in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, forgive me because I've cursed my test, I've cursed my trial. Say, Lord, forgive me. Now that you have asked your forgiveness, your test will work for your good. Your trial will work for your good. special anointing tonight. J'arrache cette racine par l'autorité du nom de Jésus. 
soyez relâchés ce soir. Libérés pour tout ce qui s'en vient. The Seigneur, the Lord will take you into hospitals. Pray for the sick. He will take you into dans les, les maisons pour les personnes âgées. Il va vous amener dans des endroits où personne ne veut aller. Mais parce que vous avez traversé ce chemin difficile, le Seigneur vous a équipé pour aller dans des endroits nouveaux, des endroits même sales, des endroits où les gens ne sont pas bien traités. Je vois même des maisons où les femmes sont battues. Vous allez aller voir les femmes là-bas. Parce que le cœur est plein de compassion. Le cœur est prêt pour voir des souffrances que vous n'avez jamais vues encore. Je vois même un voyage. Le Seigneur va, va vous amener dans un voyage et vous dites, mais how can I go into that trip because I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well. The Lord is removing that disease tonight. Healing is flowing. Healing is flowing. Travel. You will travel. The enemy wants you to believe that it's almost over. He's a liar. He's a liar. I don't know your age and I don't want to know. It's not over until it's over. Be blessed in Jesus' name. That's why he uses fear to stop you. Because once fear is gone, you're a dangerous woman. So rise up, woman of war, woman of peace. You're a woman of war and you're a woman of peace. You want peace, make war. And each time you have fear, do what I've told you to do. Don't ever tolerate fear anymore and be bold rise up in boldness say the Lord I speak boldness I speak boldness in Jesus name of the enemy. He cannot has a hold on you because you're slippery. So let the oil rub you tonight. Let the oil of the Holy Spirit rub you on your mind, on your eyes. The Lord is giving you a new vision, a new sight of looking at things. There's a situation. I don't know anything about it. The Lord is not showing me what it is. But there's a situation where the way you look at it, it depresses you. The way you look at it, and you have all the good reasons to be concerned. But the Lord is touching your sight, your spiritual sight tonight. Is putting oil on your vision, on your eyes. And when you get up tomorrow morning, you will have a new vision about it. 
a new way of seeing the thing. You will not see it with eyes of despair. You will not see it with eyes of depression. You will not see the thing with eyes of discouragement. But the Lord is giving you His eyes. You will see the situation with God's eyes. And because your sight is changing, you will attract success. You will attract the victory. Don't think that it's the end. I don't know what it is. But don't think it's the end. It's not. Is it okay with you? I call the Lord of heaven. I call. started when you were very young tried to destroy you in many ways but he has not succeeded and he will not succeed because you are a chosen one and you will preach the word of God mark my words you will preach the word of God When you, um, when you prophesy, I could see myself. How old are you? How old are you? 27, so young. I started when I was 30. 
But when I was 27, I was prophesying like you, you did. And the Lord is telling me to tell you that He has put inside of you a treasure. And you prophesied about the treasure. And it's, a, it's, a, it's really a precious treasure. It's an anointing to preach. It's not for right now. It's for later. But prophesy as much as you can. But by prophesying, you will stir up the gift. You will stir up the gift of um, teaching the Word of God, preaching the Word of God. And I could see myself in you when I was your age. That's how I started, by prophesying. But I, I, I had something, and I didn't know what I had. And you have something and you didn't know what it was, but now you know. The Lord is preparing your heart and He's preparing your, the soul of your mind and of your heart for the ministry you are going to have one day. But the next months, the next two or three years, be trained. Put yourself into submission to the leadership. Be trained in Bible school. Prophesy as much as you can because you are called, but you need to be formed and transformed. You need to be trained because you have a mighty anointing. But that anointing has to be counseled, has to be trained, has to be shaped so that when it's time for you, you're ready. Receive that word. Do you receive it? Thank you, Jesus. And you know, when you prophesy, you feel that heavenly treasure in you is so strong that it's like a conflict with your earthly vessel. And sometimes you feel the conflict inside of you and you're wondering, what's wrong with me? Well, the Lord wants to tell you tonight, it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's because the treasure is strong. And it, 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 it wages war with your earthly vessel. That's why you sense that inside of you. You understand what I mean? Be blessed in Jesus' name. Jeanette, the Lord is not through with you. I'm breaking the, the thing that is as a hold on you because you are a mighty woman of faith a mighty woman of the word of God you preach the word of God and I release you in the name of Jesus I break the chain in Jesus name I break that thing over you in the name of Jesus I release you I break the power of darkness over you in the name of Jesus and I release you into your destiny be bold in the name of Jesus. Rosso Korebe Shende Yarabakanda. I take away the chain. I break that chain. I break that curse. In Jesus' name. I release you. There's an offense that came into you. And the enemy tried something through an offense. And the Lord is saying to you, take your eyes off that offense from now on because it was a trick of the enemy. He has been defeated. He, is, he has been known under the light of Christ tonight. He has no more power over you. In Jesus' name, that offense is erased and gone. And you're free. Continue. Continue, Tarot 
dans la puissance de Dieu. Ramakanda ya son televeshente. Reveyadoro koso televeshente. Honda ramakaya ando son televeshente. Ramakaya ando koso te. Bless her tonight, oh Jesus. Bless her tonight. In every area of her life. Lord, I pray self confidence. I pray that the image of herself would be restored in the name of Jesus. I cancel the ugly words that have been said to her. I cancel their effect on you, my sister. In the name of Jesus, there were lies of the pit of hell. Get out of those ears, you ugly words, in the, in the name of Jesus. You know those words. I cancel them in Jesus' name. Be free. Lift up your head. of worth you're a woman of excellence I bind those spirits that came into your adolescence you were 15 years old when that thing happened I break that curse in Jesus name I uproot those spirits that came because of that event I release you in the name of Jesus in your image of yourself you're, you were stuck there at 15 years old and that event prevented you from growing and be a mature woman but tonight the chain is broken and you grow and you're not afraid to grow and you're not afraid to become a mature woman in God receive that tonight. You know what? Even your voice, I've never heard you, but your voice will change. The Lord is showing me that you have a voice of a, of a, of a 15 year old. How old are you? 44. Grow in Jesus' name. Be mature. Be a woman of 44 years old in the name of Jesus. changing you a lot. You understand English? You come from Congo? Oui, tu parles français? The Lord is changing you. Il te change beaucoup. Et tu es un homme de couleur parmi beaucoup de blancs. Et moi, je suis une femme blanche parmi beaucoup de noirs. Dans mon église. Et ça nous force à changer. The Lord is forcing you to change. You feel some pressure right now. And it's the Holy Spirit that is taking you out of your bubble. And 
and he's, he's transferring you from a season to another season and he's transferring you from a mentality a mindset to another way of seeing things and the Lord is putting on you tonight in a souplesse comme on dirait ça en anglais a softness a tenderness a souplesse c'est pas tout à fait souplesse uh, uh, an easiness to change uh, a teachableness and you you Tomorrow morning when you run, when you get up, you won't see life the same way. You won't see the ministry the same way. You had a tendency to see things in a like in a box. And the Lord is changing you, He's healing your mind. You've been through a lot in your country, you've been through a lot in your childhood. Your parents have been through a lot, your ancestors. And I break the curse of past generation over you in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of nightmare right now in the name of Jesus. And the spirit to visit him during the dreams, during the night. I command you to leave and go and never come back in Jesus' name. Spirit, spirits of the night, you leave. Sorcery and witchcraft spirits, you leave that man in the name of Jesus. Bind and I break the curses of ritual in Jesus' name. Lord, something happened in the childhood. And I plead the blood of Jesus on that event. I plead the mighty blood of Jesus over that event. And I release my brother from now on. That event has no more power over him. He is a child of God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. He belongs to Jesus. Satan, he doesn't belong to you. Take your hands off him right now. The Lord is saying to you, you're called to the ministry. But don't try to skip some steps. One step at a time, and you will succeed. Are you okay with me? Melanie, songs of the Spirit. I hear in my spirit songs of the Spirit. obstacles and you will do it. Do you believe me? Hallelujah. Is it your wife? The Lord is showing me a pure heart in both of you. A heart of compassion for the needy. A heart of compassion for the lost. A heart of compassion for young people who are in drugs, who are in bondages. The Lord is showing me a ministry as a, as a, as a team. A team, a couple ministry to 
help the needy, to help the people in the street, to help the young people who are bound. I see you, you are going to go in places and you are going to take out of the, the mouth of the lion. You are going to take the, the sheep out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord right now is giving you a strength to do that. It will be a process. Don't worry. It will not be something in one or two days. It will be a process. But the Lord is e equipping you. So go to the courses, Bible study, things like that. Be trained in God. Pray together. And I bind every spirit that would want to come against their destiny. I bind it and I cast it away in the name of Jesus. Distraction demons, diversion demons, I bind you. I command you to go division and quarreling and dispute spirit. Go in Jesus' name. That couple is called by God. And the enemy knows and he's trying, but he will not succeed. What God has ordained in your life will come to pass. Stay pure. Keep your eyes for your wife all of your life. Be wise. The wise woman is better than gold, is better than everything. Be wise. Ask wisdom every day. Ask purity every day. Amen. The Lord has raised you up for this time. The Lord has equipped you for this season. Don't put it for the future. It's for now. You have an anointing for now. Rise up. Pray. Fast. Preach, prophesy, and rise up in boldness, in authority. Don't look at your left, don't look at your right, don't hear what people say. Don't, I'm not saying not to listen to counseling, to counsel, but don't put your ear to every, what everybody says. You're unique. Your anointing is for now, your anointing is unique. Don't compare yourself so and so the tendency would be that but the Lord is telling you tonight you're my man you're my man I've chosen you, you're my warrior rise up in authority when you wake up at night at 3 o'clock in the morning don't think it's an insomnia it's the warrior spirit in you so you have to war against flesh and not against flesh and blood, but against principles. You have to war. Take your Bible, read it out loud, and war. There's a, there's a problem in your family, and the Lord is in control. But pray. Don't criticize, pray. Amen. The lady. You are a woman of excellence. You are of a woman of, of quality. The, the fabric of your personality is of high quality. Because you've been resisting in the midst of many storms. And because of that resistance, you've increased your worth and your value. The Lord says, now it's time for you to help younger women. It's time for you to diversi. Uh, diversi. Mm. Pour out your knowledge. Pour out your wisdom. Pour out your experience on younger women. The Lord will open up a way for that. Because you say, how can I do that, Lord? The Lord will send you one, two. He will open up a way. He will make a vase, a vase, because you're, you're his vase. And I see you 
You know those vase that we buy at Winners? <laughs> They're very popular with all those little mirrors uh, uh, glued together. That's the way I see. That's the way God sees you. Because you've been through many broken, uh, your heart has been broken many times. The situation has hurt you many, many times. But the enemy thought he was, he, he had succeeded in crushing your spirit, but he hasn't succeeded. It had made you stronger. And it had made you a beautiful vase. I see all those little pieces of a mirror glued together by the oil, by the, by the glue of the Spirit. And the Lord will not remove all of your scars. He left a few. He removed some, but He left a few. Because your scars is showing His mercy and His grace. And now He's pouring into that vase the fresh oil of His Spirit. You are a magnificent vase for Him. And He's pouring His oil. And now it's time for you to pour out. Which means you forget about yourself now. You forget about the hurts. 